Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Prisoner Press. I want to offer you shalom and blessings in the name of Yeshua or Jesus. And we're continuing on this theme of demonology and studying the evils that really corrupt our world and put us into absolutely unbearable danger. But I want to tell you that there is still hope. This world is not too shrouded in darkness for Jesus to help us. And as Romans, which is a great book to read when you're looking at demonology and you're looking at evils and darkness that may make you fearful or frightened or worried, don't be worried. As Paul said to the Roman church, I am convinced that neither death nor life Neither angels nor demons, neither present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation. All of creation, including the fallen angels, demons, the Nephilim, anything created in his wonderful creation, nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, Yeshua our Lord. And today we're going to be looking at a study called Azaziel, the original blacksmith, how swords, shields, bracelets, and eyeshadow doomed humanity. Now, a couple housekeeping notes. If you want to find this study and go through it more in depth in longer time on your own, of course, we will be offering it on prisonerpress.com slash Azaziel. A-Z-A-Z-E-L, just an English phonetic spelling. Link in the description, of course. We will be offering it, and we will be looking at the book of Hanakh a lot in this, Enoch. Now, some people don't like considering Enoch. They don't believe it's inspired by God. Of course, I believe as well. I don't think that it belongs in the canon Bible. I think if Yahweh wanted it in the Bible, he would have included it in the Bible. But I do think that it is a helpful handbook that is based on historical facts that has been suppressed for a long time. And I think that Yahweh is at work in the world today, making this book available to us so that we can have it as a handbook for the end times that are quickly approaching upon us and they are very perilous indeed and something frightening that we need to keep looking at. So if you want a book of Enoch and you don't have one, there are a few free PDFs online, but I recommend you get a physical copy, which is what I do. You can highlight, you can write, you can study, you can take it places with you. It's just wonderful all around and we are selling these on our website. We receive a small commission when you purchase it, nothing much. Your price is still as cheap as ever. We have an amazing deal for you, $10. And you could have your own physical copy of the Book of Hanak or Enoch that's absolutely reliable and trustworthy, sent right to your door. So go to prisonerpress.com slash Enoch. I'll stop the commercial now. Uh, we just want to help you out. You could also get a free copy online if you just want to read a PDF. But for study purpose and prayer purpose and whatever other purposes you have, I think you should get a physical copy, which is what I do. And I'm very happy with it. So let's talk about Azaziel uh, in an introduction here. Azaziel is a lesser known figure among Christians because bibles like the niv and the nlv and newer translations like that replaced the word azaziel with scapegoat or wasteland like when we look to leviticus and it talks about aaron sacrificing the uh the lambs for the uh, yom kippur the the day of atonement it's been translated to scapegoat however newer versions that have recently come out like the esv They've switched it back to Azaziel, so that's interesting. As the book of Enoch is coming out of suppression, we're also seeing Bibles replace the proper word. Even the KJV had switched Azaziel to scapegoat, which I found quite interesting. However, when we talk about the credibility of Azaziel information, it's not in the Bible. Well, the word is in the Bible twice, the Greek word. However, we do have lots of other material that covers it that, yes, is known as Apocrypha. However, it's been used to make the Bible more credible, such as the Dead Sea Scrolls. In the Qumran community, when they found the scrolls in a cave, it confirmed 
that the Bible has been translated appropriately to the KJV. We have the book of Hanak, the, the Apocalypse of Abraham. These are books that make this uh, information more credible. And the author of the book of Enoch says that God ascribes all the sin of Israel to Azazel. So this is a big story, and this is a big topic that you're not going to hear about on Sunday morning at your church, but I think it's important to know as the body of Yah that there is powerful demons in the world that are trying to harm humanity and take control of humanity and we need to be on the lookout and we need to be vigilant at these powers and principalities and as Ezekiel knows the body of Christ he was once one of God's closest celestial beings in the heavenly realm until the rebellion of the angels so let's talk about the Jewish legend in Jewish legends as Ezekiel as a demon or evil spirit to whom in the ancient rite of Yom Kippur a scapegoat was sent, they would sacrifice a goat. They'd first have two goats, one to the Lord, one to Azazel. The one to the Lord would be sacrificed. The one to Azazel was carried out by the high priest in the second temple and described in the Mish and uh, the Mishnah, which is another work of Apocrypha, describes this. After the high priest symbolically put their hand on the head of the goat and that transferred all the sins of the ancient Israel to the goat, it was driven into the wilderness and cast over the precipice to its death. And that's what Jewish legends say. Azazel was the personification of uncleanness by rabbis later. And then some people described him as a fallen angel. Now, we know he was a fallen angel. But it's interesting that early rabbis would call him the personification of uncleanness. Because in a way, he was. But we also need to accept that he was a real, powerful, ancient being. Now, the canon Bible, as I said, Leviticus 16, 6 to 10. I'm just going to read the NIV here for simplicity. KJV would probably be better. But it says, Aaron is to offer the bull for his own sin offering to make atonement for himself and his household. Then he is to take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the entrance to the tent of meeting. He is to cast lots for the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other for the scapegoat. Aaron shall bring the goat whose lot falls on the Lord and sacrifice it for a sin offering. But the goat chosen by lot as a scapegoat, as as Azazel's, as a sacrifice to the ancient demon Azazel, the fallen angel, he shall be presented alive before the Lord to be used for making atonement by sending it into the wilderness as a scapegoat or to Azazel into the wilderness where they believe Azazel is bound in chains. Now Azazel, how he looks at what we know about his physical appearance. He's extremely beautiful. He's very handsome. They would say big, beautiful wings on his back. But once he entered the earth as a fallen angel, his beauty was taken from him. He took on a demonic appearance like a serpent scales reptilian looking a demon snake body with human hands and feet and six wings according to the apocalypse of abraham where they describe him as some sort of a flying creature and he's also said in certain ancient texts and books of apocrypha not in anything mainstream but just in in certain literature, he's said to wear goat skulls and bones because these are the animals that were sacrificed to him frequently, goats. So he has sort of a fixation on goat bones and such. Now, once he fell to earth, he became the leader of the Gregory or the Watchers. They were fallen angels who descended onto Mount Hermon. You can read about this in Genesis 6 or the Book of Enoch. They reproduced with human women. He was known to be a master of seduction and confusion. And the evil teachings that he brought to the earth, that he was punished and condemned for by Yahweh, is that he taught humans weaponry. He taught humans the art of war. He taught women to wear makeup. Hmm, I didn't know that was so bad, but apparently it was. It helps women deceive and it wasn't intended that humanity would wear makeup. Now, you're saying, oh my goodness, my 
my daughter, my wife wears makeup now. Are they condemned to hell? No, because of course we do live lives of sin, but we are washed clean by the blood of Yeshua. Because of Yeshua, you can wear the makeup that you've been wearing. He also taught witchcraft, sorcery, astrology, and some people even believe that he taught abortion, as we covered in our last video, how ancient Hebrew literature discussed the creation of abortion and the implementation of such in the end times. Now, God's response to all this, first, I already told you that he ascribed all sin to him. He told Enoch to make him responsible for all the sin. And then Yahweh instructed Uriel to warn Noah about the flood. These were in the days of Jared, remember. So he had to cleanse the entire earth by creating a worldwide flood that would kill everybody. Now, of course, it didn't work. We know that in some of Noah's daughter-in-law's bloodline, the Nephilim DNA continued. We still have Nephilim in the world today, yes. But God is all-knowing. He's omniscient. Doesn't he know this? Yes, he does know this. And you'll understand in time in different studies that it's all intentional. Yahweh knows everything, and we have to put complete trust in him that he does everything for a reason. And after he instructed Uriel to warn Noah about the flood, he instructed Raphael, another powerful angel, to imprison Azazel. Bind us as yell, head, hand and foot, and cast him into the darkness, and make an opening in the desert, which is Dudiael, and cast him therein. Hadudiael is um, a Hebrew place, which, if I remember correctly, is a jagged cliff or something. I'm out of date on my Hebrew. And place upon him rough and jagged rocks, and cover him with darkness, and let him abide there forever, and cover his face that he may not see light. That's Tanakh 4. And on the day of great judgment, we'll go forward to 6 to 7, he shall be cast into the fire, and heal the earth with, the, with which the angels have corrupted, and proclaim the healing of the earth that they may heal the plague, and that all the children of men may not perish through all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons. That's six to seven. Let's talk about some other manifestations, how as this yell affects things today. Some believe, people that study ancient Greek mythology, they believe that the Greek titan Prometheus is the manifestation of Azazel because he has similar characteristics. He taught warfare. He was bound to hell after, uh, in their culture, they believe Zeus was punishing him. Of course, we know Yahweh is the true and one God. They have it wrong. And also, in Greek mythology, the Titans, or the Nephilim, the Titans were another word for Nephilim, demigods, like Prometheus was a Titan, known as a Nephilim, but we know he was truly a fallen angel. They fought against the gods, ancient Greek gods, who were truly fallen angels. So we understand that other cultures witnessed Azazel in his evilness on the earth. He had about a 400 year reign on the earth, creating problems. God gave the earth 400 years of dealing with these vile, sick creatures who were creating so much evil and pain on the earth until he wiped them all out in the flood. Now let's talk about manifestations today because I have had emails, which you can send me an email at contact at prisonerpress.com of people saying that they know someone or they themselves have been possessed or oppressed by Azaziel. And how is this possible when we have Bible verses like 2 Peter 2, 4 that says, God did not spare angels when they sinned, but he sent them to hell, putting them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment. They're held in chains, yes. So how can they be at work in the world today? How can people, and I'll throw it the New Testament, of course, if you read the Greek New Testament, you see that there are demons that are oppressing and possessing people. Jesus, Yeshua, in his ministry on the earth, casts demons out. Exorcisms are normal. So we need to get to a place of understanding, and you and I both have to wrap our heads around this, that although they are chained, they are waiting for judgment, and they are in darkness. It's not a literal jail cell that they sit in. 
They still have influence in the world. They can still roam the world spiritually. They don't have human bodies. They're not stuck to one place. We know they mastered the art of time travel. We know they slip interdimensionally. So these beings are not humans that you can lock in a box and that they can't manipulate anything outside of it. These are spiritual demons that have the power to manifest spiritually in different situations. So we need to be aware that Azaziel is at work in the world today, spiritually, until the day of judgment when God casts him in any possibility of him manifesting in any form into hell as we know is going to happen in Revelation, but first they will be released on the earth. And how horrifying will that be when we're painted with the ancient picture of Babylon and the ancient, uh, what do you call it? And all the ancient situations going on in the days of Noah where the earth is absolutely in turmoil. Nephilim are fighting with fallen angels. Nephilim are eating themselves, murdering, raping, and forcing women to abort babies. This is the situation we're headed towards in the days of Noah, as the book of Revelation proclaims. And as a body of Christ, we are a body of royal priests. We need to be prepared to fight against this spiritually. We need to not be satisfied with the mediocre and the mundane. And together, we need to believe that even though we feel like grasshoppers and they are giants and Nephilim in the promised land, we march right towards it as the body of Christ. This is our charge by God, Yahweh himself himself you and i are destined for greatness in the name of yeshua we have the power to implement the holy spirit and be empowered to fight these evil principalities and i believe that together as the body we are going to achieve this and i'm excited for it i'm empowered by it and I hope you are too now i know while we're studying demonology it can be quite disturbing sinister and people say you shouldn't be focusing on the bad stuff just focus on the good stuff but we need to be vigilant we need to be aware of all the things that are going on in creation or else why would god include it in his work we know that god is the word so we need to love all of god love all of the word and study diligently Subscribe to this channel, Prisoner Press. Head to prisonerpress.com, Prisoner Press on Facebook, Prisoner Press on Twitter. We are all over just trying to express the truth and to expose evil. And we are in the midst of being attacked by censorship. Like most channels that are pushing the truth, we're not sure if we're going to survive through the month of December with YouTube's new policies. But if we get taken off YouTube, head to prisonerpress.com. Find us on social media and we'll get you plugged in to where we are then. But we're praying and hoping that we do continue to be able to use this platform to spread the truth. Of course, we're on BitChute as well. I want to give a shout out to those of you watching on BitChute, actually. I don't get over there too much to say hi in the comments, but um, bless you. God bless you in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will be empowered by the Holy Spirit against these evil principalities and powers. Bless you on BitChute. Amen. 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 Bless you on YouTube. Bless you on uh, Twitter and Facebook. I love you. And together we are pressing on towards the mark. Truly. Truly. Subscribe to this channel. Let's get us boosted up in the algorithms. And I'll see you next time. Brady G for Prisoner Press. Goodbye.